All right, now's the time to take a look at using our own samples with Scanner. And to do this, we want to be extra clear about how Scanner uses the samples from a file management perspective. And I know that sounds boring, but this is actually kind of important. So I've selected Snapshot 1 TX123 Retro, and you look at the sample waveform. If you look above it, you see that it has the name of the sample here, Creature Magic Retro Wasteland uh, SK, and so forth. And above the sample waveform display, we see that there is a sample selector. So if I click on this and move forward, I can select different samples to use with the same snapshot settings. And so for some of these, they're going to sound quite similar to the original. And the original sounds like this, by the way. If I click to the second one. Now I'm, I'm off of the waveform display effectively, so I would need to drag this course position slider back into where there's some actual audio data. So it sounds somewhat different, but, but there are characteristics that are similar because all of the rest of these snapshot settings are the same. Now here's another one where you're kind of off the grid in terms of the sample information. If I move it over, that's a little harsher. But my point is that there are, for each one of these snapshots, there are really 10 samples at your disposal. I see so click through these, and when you get to the 11th sample, you see that it's listed as empty. 11 and 12 are both empty. This is where you want to drag in your own sample. And the reason it's important to use 11 or 12 is that you don't want to accidentally overwrite the samples that Scanner has pre-installed. Because if you drag in a sample of your own and then you save the ensemble, and, and you've dragged in a sample over one of the other slots, it will save that sample with it and then the, uh, the pre-existing sample will be overwritten, so you don't want to do that. But so for example, if I wanted to bring in a sample to this 11th slot, I can come over here to my disks, and this is where you're going to locate your samples, by the way. So under disks, I have this directory kind of pre-navigated. I've already, I've already selected it. This is the Alex Nigamon sample pack. It's the I Call It House sample pack from Loop Masters, which if you've watched many of my videos, you see that I'm always using this one because I like it. Uh, but but there are a variety of samples here for music loops. There's one that I know I like that is a bell sample, and it sounds like this. Kind of a haunting sound. Now, when you locate your samples, you'll notice down here that you have these kind of audition controls. These allow you to audition the sample before you've done anything with it in Reactor. It's very useful. And there are some settings here, such as auto and play, that'll allow you to automatically audition them when you select them. Right? When, when that play is lit, it's, it's actually playing the sample. If I turn that off, it's just going to select it, and then you click play to play it. I like having it on auto just to, to kind of audition them very quickly. So if I drag this in, see that the sample display now has brought in this sample information. If I play a key, you hear that it sounds very much like the original snapshot, TX123 Retro. And uh, it doesn't sound at all like this, like this Bell's uh, sample. So we'll get into tweaking this more, but for right now, it's interesting to note that really, you're these controls have a lot to say about how the sample sounds. It's not just going to play it front to back. I mean, it can do that if that's what you want it to do, and we'll get into kind of some back and forward type movements when when we get into the more uh, detailed features of this. But it's interesting to note that how, how remarkably similar these samples sound when they're used with the same settings. And now, before going further, let's save this. And I want to show you how to save this so you don't write over the stuff that's already in there. Now in this case, you wouldn't be writing over anything anyway because we brought this sample into the uh, 11th spot, which is an empty slot. So you don't have to worry about having overwritten anything. But you might just want to save it with a different, um, this ensemble with a different name so that you have all your samples in there and you know that it has all of the tweaks that you've made. So I want to uh, save ensemble copy as and then I want to say, I don't know, scanner BK. How's that? I'll just save it to my desktop. And then I have it on my desktop, and when I want to reload it, I can work with that version, and I'd never have any concern about overwriting the uh, samples that are already in there.
So that is my kind of somewhat boring file management disclaimer, but I think it will serve you well in terms of being straight on, on what you're doing and what's going to save with the ensemble. Alright, now you may have guessed from this segue that this is not going to be the typical video. This is more of a collection of different techniques that I want to show you to get you kind of interested and inspired on using Scanner. Now Scanner, of course, is an experimental instrument. And I say this again just because, you know, it's, there, are, there are VSTs where you, where you know exactly what you're getting. And you go in and you search for a certain sound and you get it and they do a fantastic job with that. And, and Native Instruments has plenty of them. Massive, Absinthe, uh, and they're also very deep instruments. And then you have instruments like Scanner that tend to be more experimental, where, where you're coming in kind of treating it as a sonic playground, right? You're kind of having a conversation with the instrument. You're not going in saying, I want this, I want this kind of lead, or I want this kind of bass. You're going in with the purpose of exploring and finding sounds that you wouldn't have consciously thought of, and using those perhaps to kind of add variety and uh, and some uniqueness to your to your tracks. So let's just keep that in mind that this is because if you approach this from the perspective of I want this kind of sound, it's just going to be endless frustration for you. This is better to just kind of enter this enter this sonic universe that Scanner occupies and and just kind of you know work with whatever it gives you and kind of have a conversation with it as I said. So there's my uh, brief philosophical bit. Now in this brief section, I want to show you how to use Reactor's audio recorder to record some of the some of the transitions that you'll get from this preset morpher. And this is not anything that I came up with. This is actually uh, suggested by Stefan Schmidt in the I think the first page of the documentation. And and Reactor's audio recorder is like the most underrated piece of Reactor. It's really useful. I don't know why no one ever uses it, or maybe they do. I don't know. I just I don't hear about it that often. So. If I come down here to this middle pane and I click on this play button at the bottom, that's that's what will bring up the audio player here at left and the recorder at right. Now if I click this off, this may be what you see up front. So you want to click on this to bring up the audio recorder. And the audio recorder, of course, is here to the right. And if you click on this gearbox icon, it will bring up the settings that you're using to record the audio, the recorder settings. So it defaults to manual, which means that you're actually clicking uh, record and clicking stop to to uh, produce your audio file. Now I like to use note on and note off so that you know it's o it's going to start when I play a note and it's going to stop when, stop when I take my my finger off the note. I just like that. I think it's a little cleaner. But you know, do what you want. So I'm going to leave it on note on note off and click OK, and then I am going to initiate one of these preset morph. Uh, trips that we have at our disposal. Now I have TX-123 Retro again, and you'll recall that when I play a note, if I play a note and click on a, a different destination, it will move linearly to that other snapshot. So in the case of snapshot 5, Motorway Retro, you can see that the playhead moved and that some of the settings changed. Now you can't see all of the settings that have changed because they're concealed uh, in the A panel. They're actually in the B panel, but of course it's a kind of a kind of a catch-22 because if I click on the B panel I can no longer morph so so let's go back to one and uh, there you hear part of the transition now that's you know pretty out there that's probably something that you want to treat as maybe a transition effect so if I come down here and click on record and I have I already recorded something in there Right, so I'm going to just click OK, and this may be the case if you've been if you've been playing around with this. It